Military and government secrets can range from amusing to absurd to hands down terrifying. One thing they all have in common, though, is that they are all intriguing. But nothing can stay buried forever. The truth always comes out one way or another. From the most peculiar military facility you'll ever see to a weapon that can literally play God, here are the 20 most secret projects governments don't want you to know about. Number 20. The U.S. 6th Generation Fighter Jet the Air Force still has to unveil its selected model for the 6th generation fighter, but the wait may not be that long, according to Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall. An undisclosed number of companies are still competing to come up with the definite design for the very expected fighter, which will be the centerpiece and pride of the Air Force's next generation air dominance family of systems. But despite the big veil of mystery surrounding the competition, they did nevertheless confirm not one, nor two, but three elements of the NG GAD program so far. A manned 6th Gen fighter, the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, which is currently still under development, and a suite of drones that Kendall himself calls collaborative combat aircraft because they are meant to augment the manned fighter during battle. Aside from that, Kendall also stated that the program will not have a single prime in its system integrators, which oversees the makeup of the family of systems. That's because the Air Force has separate acquisition efforts for each of the elements. In other words, the the overarching integrator will most certainly be the government with just a little bit of industry help, and the NGAD platform itself will have the traditional prime contractor. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Operation Condor Operation Condor is the name given to a campaign of assassination and anti-guerrilla warfare carried out jointly by the secret services of Chile, Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Paraguay, and Uruguay with the tacit support of the United States in the mid-1970s. The military dictatorships then in place in Latin America, led in Santiago de Chile by Augusto Pinochet, in Asuncion by Alfredo Estrusner, in Buenos Aires by Rafael Videla, in Montevideo by Juan Bordaberry, in Sucre by Hugo Banzer and in Brasilia by Ernesto Hessel sent secret agents to pursue and assassinate political dissidents as far away as Europe and the United States. Phase 3 of Operation Condor culminated in the assassination of Orlando Letelier, former minister of Salvador Allende, in September 1976 in Washington, D.C. Various terror techniques were employed by the Secret Service, including drowning, the transmission of sound recordings of the cries of tortured relatives, and the flights of death over the Rio de la Plata. State terror explicitly targeted leftist terrorist guerrillas in the name of the so-called National Security Doctrine, although in reality, it affected any potential dissident as well as their relatives and friends. The Argentine state has also sought to justify the acts of terrorism committed in the early 1980s by invoking the theory of the two demons, a theory which established an equivalence between, on the one hand, the crimes committed by the military juntas and their death squads, and, on the other hand, the revolutionary action of left-wing armed groups. Number 18. The Five Eyes Five Eyes is the name given to an alliance that was formed in 1946 between five Anglophone countries and their security agencies. The NSA for the United States of America, the GCHQ for the United Kingdom, the ASD for Australia, the CSEC for Canada, and the GCSB for New Zealand. The alliance consisted of a series of bilateral agreements on surveillance and intelligence sharing implementations. Despite these arrangements being more commonly known as the United Kingdom, United States, Communication Intelligence Act Agreement, or UK-USA, there are many documents underpinning the Five Eyes Alliance. The Five Eyes, as leaders, never actually met at any time during my tenure of Prime Ministership. Although they're rather intricate and, above all, super secret. What this means is that all five countries that created the alliance are willing to conduct interception, collection, acquisition, analysis, and decryption activities while sharing with each other, by default, all obtained intelligence information. For many people, 
this alliance is very problematic, mainly because the intelligence sharing agreements are shrouded in extreme secrecy, which often circumvent domestic legal restrictions on state surveillance. And the more countries join the alliance, the more powerful and unstoppable they will become. Number 17. MK Ultra. MK Ultra is the code name for a CIA project to develop mind control and human programming techniques. The first two characters, MK, form a digraph and signify that it is a program of the technical direction of the CIA. The project was approved on April 13, 1953 and ended in the early 1970s. The publication of a series of articles from the New York Times in December 1974 made it possible to publicly expose the existence of secret programs targeting American American citizens during the 1950s and 60s. These revelations caused a national stir which led to the setting up of several commissions of inquiry. Related to the MKUltra project, some of these clandestine activities were carried out with the aim of exercising control over the human mind. The United States has been working on mind manipulation techniques since at least the 1920s, alongside the rise of psychology and advertising. The origins of military research in this field are linked to the experiments carried out in certain Nazi concentration camps, in particular that of Dachau. From hypothermia studies for Luftwaffe pilots to pharmacological trials, the physical and psychic limits of humans are pushed to extremes with hitherto unknown consequences. The effects of mescaline on the mind, causing symptoms of schizophrenia in some victims, are notably observed and reported by Kurt Plotner. Number 16. Project Stargate this is probably the wildest and most random secret military project of the history of the United States. Project Stargate is the code name for one of the United States federal government subprojects aimed at investigating the reality and potential applications, both military and civilian, of psychic phenomena, more specifically, the ability to psychically see events, places, or information from a great distance. This project was active from the 1970s to 1995 and followed early psychic research done at the Stanford Research Institute, the American Society for Psychical Research, and other psychical research laboratories. Despite the dubious origins of paranormal data, including Cold War rumors and disinformation, the CIA and military intelligence decided to investigate the subject in the early 1970s. The Stargate Project developed a set of scientific protocols for the study of clairvoyance and astral travel. The phrase remote viewing emerged to describe this more structured approach to clairvoyance. In 1995, the project was transferred to the CIA and a retrospective evaluation of the results was made. The CIA contracted the American Institutes for Research for an evaluation. On June 30th, before the AIR evaluation began, the CIA shut down Project Stargate due to a lack of documented evidence and claiming that the program had no value to the intelligence community. Number 15. Vault 7. Vault 7 is the name given to a leak made by the infamous WikiLeaks website which made the U.S. intelligence agencies face massive public embarrassment. It was described as the biggest ever leak of confidential documents from the CIA which detailed the tools they used to break into phones, communication apps, and other electronic devices. There were not hundreds, but thousands of documents leaked on the website which mainly focused on techniques used for hacking and revealing how the CIA cooperated with British intelligence to come up with a sinister plan that turned smart televisions into improvised surveillance devices. The WikiLeaks leak also proved the inability of U.S. spy agencies to protect their own sensitive and secret documents in the digital era. In other words, not only are they spying and surveilling everybody, or at least have the medium to do so, but they also lie about it and then they can't even keep secret the documents that would expose them. What a hot mess. Number 14. Battalion 316. This was a very dark time in history, and many of the countries involved have never faced the consequences of their illegal actions yet. It happened in Honduras in the 1980s. The main death squad was given a code name, Battalion 316. There is no record of its foundation, but the first cases of disappeared people date from 1981. In that year, Washington decided to change the ambassador in Tegucigalpa. John Dimitri Negroponte was chosen. His resume was perfect for the job 
Job, former head of the CIA in Vietnam. Negroponte was the key man in Washington's anti-communist strategy in Central America and in the creation of the Nicaraguan Contras. Billy Hoya was not just any member of 316, he became head of the Tactical Division. This battalion acted in sync with the National Directorate of Investigations, or DNI, the repressive arm of the Army. They were tasked with carrying out assassinations, torture, and disappearances against presumed political opponents of the government during the 1980s alongside the little-known Imperial Honduras. Its members received training and support from the United States Central Intelligence Agency, both in Honduras and at secret locations on U.S. soil. At least 19 of its members graduated from the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation. They also received training from the 601 Intelligence Battalion of Argentina and Chile. Number 13. Project Thor the U.S. Air Force has been considering the deployment of a highly sophisticated and cutting-edge weapons system in space. The name for the project, which is already under development, is Project Thor. Despite the fact that the USA signed the Outer Space Treaty in 1967, an international law that prohibits the U.S. from deploying nuclear, biological, or chemical weapons in space, they are, nevertheless, working on it. And Project Thor is no joke. This new weapon they are creating promises to deliver strikes many times more powerful than most of the nuclear and chemical attacks we know of today. Not only that, but they are also developing a non-nuclear space-based super weapon, which will provide the U.S. with potentially a huge advantage against countries with a no-first-use policy for their own nuclear arsenals like China or North Korea. This is incredibly dangerous for the rest of the world, because it means that the U.S. will now have the power to strike targets with the same level of force as a nuclear warhead, but without having a worry about escalation to a nuclear war. They could virtually strike any country in the world with impunity in a way. Number 12. Flying Saucer Program so, apparently, UFO sightings are not reserved for crazy UFO chasers. When the government has a secret program to track UFOs, you know there's something serious going on. They would never spend money for nothing. And as it turns out, the U.S. Air Force has been documenting weird and unexplainable aerial happenings since the 1940s. This highly secretive program is called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, which for several years operated out of the Pentagon. What are they do? Well, they look into sightings of UFOs. You may think that the enemies of the nation are only on planet Earth, but evidently they think they can also come from space. But this program didn't only assess the national security risks these objects might pose, it also considered the possibility of reverse engineering flying saucers, which is much more interesting. The program was established in 2007, and by the end of 2012, they had spent a total of around $22 million. After that year, their budget got cut off. This secretive program was made public by Luis Elizondo, a career intelligence officer and, most importantly, the former head of the program. He said that unfunded investigations are still ongoing, so who knows what they may reveal in the future. Number 11. Constant Peg Program this was a secret program that aimed to train U.S. Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps fighter aircrew to specifically fly against aircrafts of Soviet design. Their nickname was the Red Eagles, and they gave American air crews the skills and confidence to not only go against, but also defeat these threats in aerial combat. The program was created in 1977 in the middle of the Cold War, and they applied techniques and lessons learned prior in Southeast Asia. Basically, what the U.S. Air Force learned during the Vietnam War, they now wanted to apply against the USSR. Originally, the concept was pushed by a small group of pilots from the Fighter Weapons School at Nellis AFB, Nevada, but their vision soon gained massive support and momentum, seeing that the department had suffered major losses during the Vietnam War. But even with so much enthusiasm, establishing a secret squadron of Soviet aircraft from the ground up wasn't a simple thing to do. Eventually, a secret airfield was built in the Tonopah Test Range in remote Nevada. The name of the program came from Major General Hoyt Sandy Vandenberg, the Air Force Director of Operations and Readiness at the time, who gave the final go-ahead for the project and whose wife's nickname was Peg, a diminutive from Peggy. 
Number 10. Project Pluto. Project Pluto was a study into the viability of applying heat from nuclear reactors to ramjets with the intention of creating a new type of supersonic low-altitude missile, or SLAM. It was started on January 1, 1957, when the United States Air Force and the United States Atomic Energy Commission entrusted the project to the precursor of the current Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. This, this research was moved from the facilities of the Livermore Institute in California to new facilities located at Jackass Flats in the Nevada Test Area, a place known as Area 401. The complex consisted of 10 kilometers of road, a critical assembly building, a control control building, construction buildings, and workshops. It was also built a facility that could accommodate 450 tons of pressurized air to simulate the flight conditions of the ramjet of the Pluto project, the cost of which was 2.1 million US dollars. The project was led by Dr. Ted Merkel, director of the R Division of the Livermore Laboratory. The principle underlying the ramjet was relatively simple. A high-speed air current is produced inside the reactor, the nuclear reactor heats the air by expanding it at high pressure inside so that it is expelled by producing thrust from the reactor. Number 9. Project Ice Worm Camp Century has been hidden under the Greenland ice for decades, but it was once part of a secret project to store 600 ballistic missiles within firing range of the USSR. Melting ice due to global warming now threatens this remnant of the Cold War with potentially devastating environmental risks. Behind the Iceworm project hides one of the best kept secrets of the Cold War, a secret that the melting ice threatens to exhume in the coming years. At the end of the 1950s, the United States decided to create a secret base drilled in the white immensity of Greenland to put Soviet territory within range of American missiles. On paper, the idea was great, but no one thought about the melting of the ice. And at the present time, ice and melted snow are streaming over the remains of this Arctic Atlantis buried beneath the ice. With the risk of dumping wastewater, polychlorinated biphenyls, and radioactive residues into the ocean. Number 8. Area 51 Surely you've heard of Area 51. It has been a long-lived American obsession for well over half a century. The name alone evokes on people images of crashed UFOs and super-secret programs with extraterrestrial life. This place is certainly shrouded by mystery. But how much of it is true? Lost in the southeast of the state of New Mexico, the city of Roswell emerged from anonymity in 1947. On July 4th, several tens of kilometers northwest of the city, an air crash occurred. A simple weather balloon tested by the army to monitor the Soviets, according to military authorities. But witnesses were adamant it was a UFO. The craziest theories started developing. What if there were aliens on board? Are some still alive? Since then, rumors have centered around the military base located in Nevada. With an area of approximately 150 square kilometers, it is larger than a big city. During World War II, this base was used for artillery and bombing tests. Then, until 1955, it was probably abandoned. But for many, it is certain. The aliens and their flying saucer debris were transported there to be studied. Fueled by pop culture, Area 51 appearing in X-Files, Independence Day, and many more, the rumor therefore crystallized around the presence of aliens in Area 51. The American press certainly made a big splash with these incredible stories. Then, in 1989, Robert Scott Lazar, aka Bob Lazar, became a highly publicized personality. He claims to have worked at Area 51 on a craft in the shape of a flying saucer. Could they be the remnants of the Roswell craft? Number 7. Project Blue Book The Blue Book Project is a commission set up by the U.S. Air Force in order to study and investigate certain testimonies on the UFO sighting phenomenon. This commission was created in 1952 and remained active until 1969. The first sightings of UFOs which followed the end of the Second World War quickly put the American Army on alert. In 1951, following a large wave of UFO testimonies, the Army decided to give more resources to the project, and on April 12, 1952, the Blue Book Project was launched under the direction of Captain Edward J. Ruppelt. 
This commission includes a study section, an investigation section, a liaison officer with the Pentagon, and civilian scientific consultants. Following an upsurge in UFO reports during 1952, the government began to take a closer look at the problem and decided to investigate. In March 1954, Captain Charles Hardin decided to make public the special report number 14 of Project Blue Book, which concluded that UFOs did not exist. But in March 1966, several civilian scientists of the project publicly took sides against the official position of Project Blue Book, which they never succeeded in proving. The Blue Book project was officially dissolved in December 1969 and ceased all activity in January 1970. Number 6. Starfish Prime Starfish Prime is the code name given to a nuclear test prepared by the United States Atomic Energy Commission and the Defense Atomic Support Agency, which became the Defense Nuclear Agency in 1971 and carried out on July 9, 1962 at a whopping altitude of 400 kilometers, considered by the International Aeronautical Federation to be located outside the Earth's atmosphere. The test was part of Operation Dominic, a series of 36 tests, including five from Operation Fish which were to be carried out at very high altitude, from 30,000 meters up. The original shot made on June 20th, 1962 from Johnston Atoll in the Pacific Ocean was a failure. The engine of the missile having stopped prematurely during the flight phase, a signal of destruction was launched while it was at an altitude of approximately 10,000 meters, thus destroying the nuclear warhead without it exploding. The second shooting took place on July 9th the same year. It exploded at 400 kilometers above a point 36 kilometers south of Johnston Atoll. The power of the detonation was 1.4 megatons. Number 5. Operation Lack Operation Lack was a sinister and horrific test made by the U.S. military in the 1950s to dust cities in their own country with a potentially highly toxic fine powder to test and study the dispersion of germs. LAC, or LAC, stands for Large Area Coverage. Of course, the official version is slightly different. They say it was a test in which they dispersed microscopic zinc cadmium sulfite particles over the vast majority of the United States and Canada in order to learn about dispersal patterns. This project was intended to allow scientists to understand better how a biological weapon attack would disperse in the country. For this experiment, the U.S. Air Force lent the Army a C-119, also known as a flying boxcar, to be used in the dispersal of the material by the ton in the atmosphere over parts of North America. The test took place on December 2, 1957. But for lots of people, this is just a facade that hides a much darker secret. Some think that one of the tests carried out specifically over St. Louis included radioactive materials. Therefore, if that theory is true, these tests were anything but harmless. Number 4. Sea Shadow IX-529 this futuristic-looking vessel is Sea Shadow, an experimental stealth ship designed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, the U.S. Navy, and Lockheed. It is sometimes referred to as USS Sea Shadow, but since it was never commissioned into the U.S. Navy, this designation is incorrect. However, although it was never officially commissioned, it appears in the Naval Vessel Register. The concept of the Sea Shadow inspired the creation of a similar but larger ship in Tomorrow Never Dies, a James Bond movie. The Sea Shadow was built in 1985 and operated in secret until its public unveiling in early 1993. It was used to test naval applications of stealth technology. It validates the possibility of a warship being maneuvered by few men in an automated environment. It was built and tested in Lockheed's Hughes Mining Barge in Redwood City, California. The Sea Shadow was revealed to the public in 1993. It then depended on Naval Base San Diego until September 2006. It was attached with the HMB-1 to the National Defense Reserve Fleet in Benicia, California. The Sea Shadow is a swath, that is to say, a motorized catamaran vessel with two deeply submerged hulls. The central platform is connected to the submerged hulls by thin junctions at the waterline. This structure allows the ship to maintain its stability up to sea state 6, which is very heavy seas with waves that can measure 4 to 6 meters high. Number 3. 
Mount Weather Located in the Raven Rock Mountain near Blue Ridge Summit in Pennsylvania is the Raven Rock Mountain Complex, a massive military installation so big it has been dubbed the Underground Pentagon. It's used to protect the country's decision makers in the event of a nuclear attack. This place features an extensive telecommunications center for the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Army, and the U.S. Navy. Originally, the complex was built as an emergency shelter during the Cold War and continues to act as a relocation point for military national command authorities to this day. Mount Weather is also the location of a control station for the FEMA National Radio System, which is a high-frequency radio system that connects most federal public safety agencies and the U.S. military with most of the U.S. states. Basically, if all hell breaks loose and someone decides to launch a nuclear attack on the U.S., the most important people in the military would come here to take refuge and to counterattack by trying to keep an open communication with the rest of the military faction in the country. It's been hypothesized by many people that the District 13 in the Hunger Games trilogy was modeled after this complex, due to its very strong similarities both in design and overall functions. Number 2. HAARP Imagine for a second a weapon so powerful it could control the weather in any part of the planet at will. Well, it would turn out this is no longer fiction, but cold-hearted reality. In the era of global warming, in addition to the catastrophic results of greenhouse gas emissions on the ozone layer, now we can add to the list a brand new generation of non-lethal weapons which allows to change the global climate however they please. Both the Americans and the Russians have given themselves the means to manipulate the weather. How's that for playing God? In the United States, the technology is being refined under the HAARP, High Frequency Active Aural Research Program, a research program which is part of the strategic defense initiative known as Star Wars. And if you still think that there's no way anyone could possibly invent a way of controlling the weather, well, sorry, but recent scientific data suggests that the program is indeed operational. This means that two countries which have a long history of disliking each other have now found yet another and rather creative way of attacking each other. They can trigger floods, droughts, hurricanes, and earthquakes. From a military perspective, the HAARP program is a weapon of mass destruction without a doubt. It can be an instrument of conquest capable of selectively destabilizing the agriculture and ecology of entire regions, if not continents. Scary, isn't it? Number 1. Dulce Base At first glance, Dulce, New Mexico is your typical small southwestern town. I mean, it doesn't even have a traffic light. But according to many, this picturesque town is only but a cap on a gargantuan and grandiose underground facility where unimaginable experiments are conducted and cutting-edge technologies are tested. They say there's a whole world underneath Dulce, which, by the way, means sweet in Spanish, a super-secret high-tech facility in which they work hand-in-hand -hand with aliens. As in, the military facility is a jointly operated human and extraterrestrial life facility. Although this still counts as a conspiracy theory, the rumors go back a long way. In fact, it was Paul Benowitz, a businessman from Albuquerque, who was the first one to claim the presence of alien life forms in Dulce. In 1979, he became absolutely convinced that he was intercepting electronic communications from alien spacecrafts and installations outside of Albuquerque. In the following years, Benowitz was adamant he had found a secret underground alien base near Dulce. He thought that the diabolical gray aliens were here to conduct horrific and bizarre genetic experiments on our species. There's also the fact that residents of Dulce claim to have spotted UFOs on many occasions. They describe them as strange moving lights in the sky. As you can see, there are many things the government's busy with that we don't know about. Sometimes these things come to light years later, but most remain top secret for a long time. How about you? Do you think that the government's hiding something from us right now? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.